It's long been written into U.S. law that if you come here fleeing and really do believe you will face particular forms of persecution, then you deserve protection here. That has been just so fundamental to the essence of this country. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. Almost the moment Trump got into office, he began issuing executive orders that changed the idea of who is deportable. Let's just talk about who Laura was mm -hmm. and what had happened to her. So Laura was a 22-year-old mother of three boys in South Texas, and she'd been living undocumented in the U.S. for a long time. One night, she got off work and was driving home with her colleagues pretty late, and they got pulled over by a local border cop. He said, are you documented or undocumented? She acknowledged that she was not here uh, legally. He called Border Patrol. This is a woman who had been routinely abused by her romantic partner to the point that she sought a protective order against him. She received that order and he was deported. He had joined a drug cartel right back across the border in the same area where she was from. And she knew, because he'd been threatening her with death, that she faced a very, very serious risk of harm if she was sent back. And she told this right away to the policemen. She said again and again, I fear I will be killed if you send me back. When I am killed next week, my blood will be on your hands. You're sending me back to the slaughterhouse. And they presented some forms to her at the Border Patrol station. It's called a voluntary removal form. And she was told that she had to sign. So at sunrise, she was crossing the bridge directly into Reynosa, Mexico, which is known to be a Zetas cartel stronghold. It's there that a few days later, he indeed strangles uh, and sets her body on fire and kills her. So one of the things that was interesting about this reporting process is that it actually began far before Trump was even elected. I set out with a team of students in a graduate school class I teach at Columbia. We picked four or five local um, legal aid providers that help immigrants, and we asked them, have you heard of anyone who was deported to their death or deported to other kinds of harm? And we basically set out to assemble a database of harm really documenting all the different ways that people can get harmed after they're deported. And then we set off to find these people. And mostly these are women and men coming from Central America's Northern Triangle. So the countries of Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador. And so many of the families I've spoken to who came here actually came here fleeing violence. They don't come here just because they want to take our jobs or make a lot of money. They many, many, many times come here because they really do fear for their lives. If you don't join this gang, we are going to kill you, or we are going to kill your mother, or we are going to kill your entire family. Oftentimes, the people I interviewed came explicitly telling the US government they wanted protection, not trying to sneak in, in fact, reporting directly to Border Patrol. And then they were never given that chance, um, despite the fact that the law requires it. Maria, Laura's mom, has taken on a lot in the aftermath of her daughter's death including really being the primary caretaker for the kids. I do remember that one of the things she said to me was, I want to show you this little miracle, thing, this thing that I find very surprising. And she walked off into her bedroom and she went and grabbed a box and she brought back in her hands a bunch of Laura's clothes. And she kind of just handed it over to me and gave this pile of Laura's waitressing clothes. And I remember like, she, she said like, the crazy thing about this is that Laura's still there and the clothes smell fresh. So the big takeaway for me under Trump has been if you are going to massively expand the numbers of people who are deportable and you are not going to afford them the conventional due process that we have written into the law and that we have agreed to in the international law as well, there are going to be real consequences. The consequences have been death or the consequences have been sexual assault or kidnapping or all these kinds of things that we want to look away from. How we think about ourselves as a country is that we have always been a nation of refuge. 
And that is changing and that is evolving as we send back more and more people who have fled legitimate forms of violence and who may have very, very good legal claims to seek protection here.